the correct title of the song, in case you ever need to look it up, is Whoop. There it is. The first word is Whoop. W H O O M P. Whoop. Whoop. W H O O M P. Did you definitely know it was Whoop? Maybe the title was Whoop, or maybe Oops. <laughs> Oops, there it is. Poop, there it is. Tagline is poop, there it is. You thought it was whoop, oops, whoop or poop. That is about to be the theme song uh, for the Trump White House for their response to the Mueller report. Whoop, there it is. Oops, oops, there it is. Whoop, they blew it. Whoops, the White House. Whoops, whoop, there it is. Whoops, there goes MSNBC. <laughs> Official Bernie Sanders is working for the Republican Party. You have said that you believe that people with felony records should be allowed to vote while in prison. Does this mean that you would support enfranchising people like the Boston Marathon bomber, a convicted terrorist and murderer? If somebody commits a serious crime, sexual assault, murder, they're going to be punished. I think the right to vote is inherent to our democracy. Yes even for terrible people. Even for terrible people. <laughs> Probably because they'll vote Democrat. <laughs> I kid. But Bernie, that makes no sense. You think a guy in jail for murder can't have his rights taken away? What is it about being in jail that you're missing? <laughs> he is in jail. He can't go outside. The toilets have no seats. Seems like not voting is the least of his concerns. But, but hey, I guess Bernie wants the guy on death row to vote. Makes sense. He can pull one lever before we pull the other. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, it's almost... It's almost tailor-made for an RNC ad. Police testifying both brothers were shooting at and throwing pipe bombs and one pressure cooker bomb at them. You think the Boston Marathon bomber should vote not after he pays his debt to society, but while he's in jail. You sure about that? You know, this is what I believe. Do you believe in democracy? <laughs> Paid for by Bernie Sanders. <laughs> what a great issue to champion, making sure the Boston bomber can vote. I guess chucking orphans down a well didn't score as high in focus groups. <laughs> Are we sure Bernie isn't colluding with Trump? Or maybe thanks to the activist media, Sanders thinks America is just as nuts as him. No, we are not. Hell, even Cher is against this. Which means it's time for... Cher is right. I'll have you know that cost over $100,000. <laughs> it's true, though. Cher tweeted that even this idea by Bernie is too crazy for her, and she dated Gene Simmons. <laughs> and Michael Bolton. <laughs> Not John Bolton. <laughs> but Bernie still won't let go. I said that because the right to vote is essential. If you are a citizen, you have the right to vote. And that is a right we must protect because we know the history of this country. We know that women didn't have the right to vote. We know that African Americans didn't have the right to vote. So, like, criminals are like women and blacks? <laughs> I'd say he's digging his own grave, but he's working on the whole cemetery. <laughs> hey, but let the Boston bomber vote. Let the Boston bomber vote. He should be voting, right? I don't think so. Let terrorists that are in prison vote. I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. Fact is, the party is on a leftward, downward spiral, and it makes you wonder, how left can this party go? College is very important and should be free. College shouldn't just be free, it should be mandatory. Don't go to college, then you go to prison. What, in prison? You can still vote. 
Only if you're a murderer or a terrorist. We need to raise the minimum wage. To at least $40 an hour. $100 an hour. $1,000 an hour. As long as you're in prison. But only terrorists and murderers. We should balance the Supreme Court. With more terrorists and murderers. Wow, that escalated quickly. The Electoral College needs to go. One person, one vote. One person, ten votes. Have a pet? A pet gets three votes. Unless it's a cat, a cat gets five votes in a bag of clams. What about serial killers? Great question. Kill ten people, get ten votes. This is really weirding me out. The rich don't pay enough in taxes. They must pay more. We need a death tax. You die, we tax you. In my plan, we tax you after you die. It's a ghost tax. What about back hair taxes? Terrible personality taxes. And taxes on ugly babies. Taxes on jerks who stood me up at the prom. You know what you did, Tristan. We need sanctuary cities. No, I want sanctuary houses. I'm talking about your house. Sanctuary hot tubs. You got a hot tub? I got a right to be in it. I'm Rick Jacuzzi, and I'm running for president. I'm Jenny Fleming, and I'm running for president. I just broke out of maximum security prison, and I'm certifiably insane, and I'm running for president. <laughs> Paid for by the really, 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 really left part. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Sleepy Joe finally woke up, and boy, is he woke. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation, who we are. And I cannot stand by and watch that happen. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for president of the United States. Wow, I dozed off during that. <laughs> so, so Joe says Trump is worse than war, terror, disease, and cream of asparagus soup combined? Somehow I don't believe that he believes that. I'm not even sure what he believes. Isn't that weird? This guy has been around forever and has no defining political achievements. He's like that TV character in a show that's always there and you don't know why. Like Janice Littman from Friends. <laughs> Screech. Daphne from Scooby-Doo. I have you know, she didn't do <laughs> Velma solved all the crimes. <laughs> Biden's been around a while. He's like your appendix. It's there all the time, but you don't know about it until it bursts. <laughs> and what is his message? Hey, guys, I'm still here. But I guess I just feel like a young man. I just feel like a young man. I'm so young. I can't believe it. I'm the youngest person. I am a young, vibrant man. I look at Joe. I don't know about him. I don't know. Right. He's not wrong. And it can't be good if Michael Avenatti bends over backwards to endorse you, but Barack Obama doesn't. A popular two-term president says no, but the sleaziest grifter ever says yes. That's like the head cheerleader turning you down for the prom, but the 400-pound janitor with a spiderweb tattoo on his face said, sure, why not? <laughs> so the next question should be, who should Joe's VP be? Joe is old and kind of slow and not that bright. So to balance his ticket, you need someone who's, you know, what's that word? Conscious. <laughs> so Joe wants America to return to the good old days of BT before Trump. But were they that good if they gave us such a change agent like Trump? Compare today's economy, the foreign policy, and jobs to back then. If you want to go back in time, Joe, I'm afraid you're going to be going alone. with sandpaper. Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hexit. Yeah. He's so funny he can make milk come out of a cow's nose. He's writer and comedian Joe DeVito. Yeah. She's the loudest thing from Detroit since the Mustang. Host of the Tyrus and Tim podcast, Cat Tim. Yeah. And he shaves 
rings with a lawnmower. Former WWE superstar, my massive sidekick, Tyrus. <laughs> Pete, this is going to be the greatest election ever because not only do you have all these candidates, you have Trump as America's heckler. <laughs> I can't add anything to what you said. Uh, li listen, you watch, you watch what Joe Biden had to say. He has absolutely nothing to say. He wanted yep. The View. Did, yes. you watch, did you watch it? Yeah, and, it, and that's a beautiful place for him to be, and he still did crappy. It, even, <laughs> even the New York Times said rambling and stumbling. Yes. Generally incoherent. Uh, it was a, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm not sorry, because I'm Joe Biden. You kind of <laughs> like me. Yes. I've, been I've been the guy that's been around this whole time, and mm -hmm. I seem affable, and I kind of touch people inappropriately, yes. but I'm kind of nice about it. It's all fine. And the thing about Bernie is, when he said that line about the, the, about the Boston bomber, the whole crowd cheered. Yeah. The whole crowd. He is speaking to a base that believes what he has to mm -hmm. say. He's running for one thing to win the primary. He'll, yeah. deal, he'll deal with Trump later on. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But he, he says what he believes, say what you want about him. Yes, he's but the opposite. he'll be formidable because of that. He's the opposite of Biden. He actually, ha he actually knows what he believes. Biden is just happy to play a politician <laughs> on TV. <laughs> Joe, thoughts? Go for it, wherever you want to go. Uh, yeah, well, I'll say, uh, first of all, Democrats, way to frame the issue. <laughs> Good choice of defending the Boston bombers' right to vote. <laughs> That's like if they said, do you think literacy is important? And they said, well, does the Unabomber get to the prison library enough? Is it, it, <laughs> <laughs> the, the only vote I care about for, for Sarnayev is the vote for his last meal before they fry him. Anything yeah. before that, I'm not interested. <laughs> so, that's true. Sanders would yeah. want it to be, Sanders would want it to be vegan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they say we need to have a conversation. Okay, well, the conversation is when you're in jail for a felony, you don't get to vote. Yeah. And when you're out, if you've rehabilitated yourself and you've paid your debt to society, we can consider it. Yeah. It's not a difficult question to have a no. conversation over. But the Democrats now, they really are looking for what's the most far left, worst person, worst position you can mm -hmm. take to signal your virtue. And they're going to pay the price for it because Trump's going to have the whole primary of them tearing each other so, apart. Are, He's going to sit back amazing. and make some notes and send some tweets and he's yeah. going to shred Yeah, them. he is. It's going to be scary. Cat thoughts. My favorite was when they asked Kamala Harris that question. Yes. And she said, we can have a conversation. <laughs> like, yeah, I think that's what that guy was trying to do by asking you that question. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that's what he was going for. <laughs> like, if if I would have been that moderator, I would have asked her, well, are you busy now? Because <laughs> we were told you had a lot of this time for answering <laughs> questions, so the conversation now works for me. It's I just, just come on, have an opinion. You're running for president. You don't get to say I don't know anymore. And she should, she has all the time in the world to know that she's a prosecutor. She owns a gun, by the way. Uh, that's not good for progressive Tyrus yes thoughts take it away you know um, I've I actually felt bad for the first time in my life for old white guys <laughs> I mean that became a term yes bunch of old white guys walking in here running for president can you believe that <laughs> disgusting I was like wow this is bizarre world I thought the whole point was to get an even playing field and have the best Mm -hmm. Man, woman, whatever. No, no, no white people. Y'all out. <laughs> like that, we were laughing, but you're like, oh, that's kind of true. The Democrats, yeah. they're upset that yep. the poll numbers are leaning towards yeah. the well, old white guys. Yeah. And uh, it's disgusting, apparently. So I, that's fun for me to watch. Never in my <laughs> life would I ever thought that I'd be sitting on a TV and like, it wasn't me and my friends complaining. It was literally other white people complaining <laughs> about too many damn white people running for president. <laughs> like, I, like, We've made it. Like we're <laughs> we're there. That and um, Cory Booker is probably the most spineless person I've ever met in my life. He will agree. No, 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 no. He will agree to whatever the left tells him. Yes. Would you have a woman as a vice president? Absolutely. Of course. I was. I, she's actually parking the car, not parking that car, but she's on her way in. She's on. She'll be right here. Like he's so afraid. Yeah. Of this. No. left monster that it's really enjoyable TV. Yeah, it is. It is. It's going to be a great two years. All right, time is running out to get your tickets for the Gutfeld Monologues live. Three shows remaining. May 4th, Tulsa, Oklahoma. May 5th, Dallas. May 6th, Midland, Texas. Go to G. Gutfeld for ticket information.